let's uh, start about you know looking back into time when I was in class 10 I bought my first computer okay the primary purpose served by that computer at that time was of a game station and I used to spend you know almost countless hours playing games like Age of Empires, Prince of Persia and many more okay now if I sit down someday and calculate the number of hours I would have played games on that desktop that is potentially much more than 2000 hours of gameplay. Now, the question which comes to my mind is, are all those hours wasted? Okay, so if I think so, maybe not. Okay, let's think it drafted in a more creative way. Could those hours have been used in something else, something more creative? Maybe, maybe not also. Okay, so looking at Knowing children, as you may, you know, they are very creative, okay, and it's very difficult to stop them from playing games, okay. And playing games is intuitively more interesting than reading stories because in those you have to imagine a story being played in the screen of your mind or even movies because in them also, you know, although you don't have to imagine the story being played in your mind, but the story, uh, as the story is being played on a screen, but you're not actively engaging in that story. You cannot, you cannot change the story. On the other hand, children are more excited. They are more creative, okay? They are interested into doing stuff rather than watching stuff. So this can be easily provided through games. Okay, so, oh, this here. Can you just try? Yeah. So, whenever you're playing a story in a game, okay, you're just put into the shoes of some superhero or some leader of a gigantic force, okay, who is saving the world and doing something really, you know, something like saving two tribes from fighting each other or fighting against two tribes so that, you know, they can win the royalty for their tribe and some many similar things. Okay, so if you look at that thing, you know, it gives you a sense of being a superhero. You tend to think that you're playing the role of a superhero. Now, games tend to provide uh, an experience which is so vivid. The controls are in your hand, you know, to control everything which is moving in the game. The audio sequences, the video graphics, they're so vivid that you tend to feel that you are the superhero. Instead of just feeling that you are playing the superhero, you tend to feel that, okay, I am the superhero of this scenario. Now, with this feeling of being the superhero, there's also a feeling of responsibility. You are responsible for your actions, for your decisions, okay? And there's curiosity in a child's mind that what will happen next, okay? What would be the consequences of his actions? What would be the consequences of his decisions, okay? And there's also a curiosity in his mind that, you know, how would other characters in the story react to his decisions, okay? Now, if we think of those things, you know, it is able to provide a child with an experience which real life things like, you know, reading stories from comics and things cannot provide. Now, looking at this thing, it seems to be almost perfect that, you know, you're learning a lot of things, you're learning, you know, leading a, a group, a crew, okay. But what happens when the game finishes, when you come back to the real world from the virtual world? Are you able to carry on the same leadership? Are you able to apply the same thoughtfulness into the real life as you are able to do that in the virtual life? The, probably the answer is no. What happens here in real life is that there is a difference of context. The thoughts which are presented in the virtual life, the missions which were there in the virtual life, do not meet the missions which are there, the thoughts or the, you know, the tasks which are presented to you in the real life. There is no tribal issue between two, you know, tribes in your school, okay? There is no princess who has been hijacked by a, you know, an evil villain who has supernatural powers and sadly there isn't an alien invasion also going on, okay? So, you probably cannot, you know, use all this knowledge that you learned in a game in your real life. So, the problem here is a disconnectivity between the issues which are present in the virtual world and the issues which are in the real world, okay? Now, the problem is how to connect them, okay? It's like, as of now, the 
story which is playing being played in the game is totally in the hands of the game developer. He decides what story would be there in the game, what key should you would be learning with those with those stories, and it's you know his decision, his uh, you know things that what the game designer wants. Now, if we transform that power from the game designer to an educator who is could, uh, you know teaching the student what a student can easily correlate with and can carry forward in his real life that would make a particular difference into it. Now with this aim in our mind, I and some of my friends here at NSID developed uh, the game Food Force 2. Now this game uh, has been developed in such a way that you can you know create your own stories and play them in the game okay and you can always share them too. Now the problem which we are addressing, uh, okay, first I'll talk about the scenario in which the gameplay has been taking place. The scenario which is taking place in the gameplay is about a village, okay, and you're being, the player is being provided a lot of resources and money which he can use for the prosperity of this village, and his ultimate aim is to grow this village into a self-sustainable community, and you know, so that he can easily survive challenges and issues like earthquakes, famines, which are, you know, changing the environment uh, continuously. Now, the motive behind it was not just the environmental factors affecting the real life play. The motive behind this was, the game was, the concept of creating your own stories, the concept of creating your own characters who can be linked with the real life characters uh, around you. Suppose, you know, uh, I'm playing this game and I have a character in the story who has been named as my father's name and who has an image very similar to that of my father's name and you know uses the same uh, same uh, you know lines to you know describe a thing or particular event as my father would do okay I would be easily able to connect him connect with him and you know through the game and a similar situation can be done by replacing my father with a teacher okay now with this platform, we have made the story building thing very easy, okay. This is just a screenshot of the game in which uh, the, it's just showing uh, uh, the village scenario in which a few huts has been built and stuff like that, okay. Okay, and this is a screenshot of the story which is being played in the game, okay. Right now, we have just one story board in the game, which is about a, uh, a son who is taking place, who is following the footsteps of his father, okay. Now his father is the serpent of the village and the son is being made to face challenges uh, initially which is of, you know, uh, helping his father in the daily life routine work of the village. Then he faces more challenging issues like what if his father left and, you know, uh, if an earthquake comes and some certain some similar situations. And finally he takes on the uh, he takes on the position of his father and now we are continuously, you know, working hard of integrating more storyboards and making it easier for educators to develop their own storyboards and share with each other, okay. Now, I would like to conclude by saying that it is, okay. Now, I would like to conclude by saying that it is not just about creating storyboards, it's actually Food Force 2 is just a beginning of a thing, uh, an idea, you know. It's about creating your own storyboards which you can easily relate with and learning through them, you know. And it can be easily extended to many other platforms. Like we have simulated a village scenario. One can simulate a modern, uh, you know, warfare scenario. As in, there are many scenarios which could be simulated and, you know, a person can learn through them. So. That is the motive behind our game, okay, and we have just taken a small step towards it. Uh, I would like to, you know, say that, imagine a future in which there are no textbooks, okay, there are games. Your internal assessment is being done on the high score of your game, okay. That would be really cool and it's something like, you know, which you can easily correlate with. That is the purpose, okay. So, I'll just conclude it by now and uh, I would say, you know, that the future is really bright and I'm happy to have made a step into it, okay? Thank you.